Okay, I'm going to give you a review of the Nissan Leaf. I've watched a number of videos on YouTube and it all seems to be people complimenting the car and telling you all such a nice things about it, as if they're trying to tell you that they bought a, a great car, that they've made the right decision. I'm going to give you a critical review, I'm going to tell you the truth. I've owned mine for a, fifth, for, for a year, I've done 15,000 miles in it, uh, and so I'm hopefully going to tell you some things that you really need to know and uh, enjoy the review. So, looking at the outside of the car, uh, I don't know quite where Nissan were coming from. I mean, they, they obviously thought electric car, futuristic car, and then come up with such a hideous design. It is a very ugly car. Beauty might be in the eye of the beholder, but this is, is quite, quite, uh, quite ugly. I don't think it's the worst car out there, but it's not far off. Um, I mean, fortunately, it's got privacy glass, uh, so my children will actually get in the car, so they can hide in the back. But um, no, I think they could have done so much better at making the car. Okay, now looking at the front of the car, the headlights, I think they're absolutely a hideous design. But the thing is they have a certain amount of impracticability about them. When you're ever driving in, in misty or foggy conditions, they seem to beam lights up into the sky as if they're looking for some UFO or something. And I don't know, I've, I've actually been through two windscreens uh, in the year that I've had it, which is quite rare for a car. I don't know whether it was just bad luck or whether there's something odd about the design that just bounces stones into the windscreen as well. So inside the car, it's not too bad. It's quite comfortable, actually. Uh, apart from this a really annoying beeping if you leave the door open. I've no idea how to turn it off. It all sorts of beeps and bongs, which are a little bit annoying. The other thing that really annoys me is these little controls on the steering wheel. They feel like they're sort of off not some 1980s ghetto blaster with this sort of cheap sort of stainless steel plastic sort of imitation uh, look like. And it just don't feel like it's quality. Um, the car could do with more USB ports, there's only one, but with a, with a family car, USB ports are quite critical these days, and there's very little cup holders and sort of things for the people in the back. Well, the car will carry five adults, but let's hope they don't need to take any bags with them, because the boot space isn't particularly big, particularly when you've got to have you know, these extra bags in it to hold the cables, so I've got two of those bags in for two different charging cables, and they've also given me some first aid kit to go in there as well. So it really just, it's just not a very big boot. Apart from that, there's no room for a spare wheel. There is no spare wheel. I don't know what, why car manufacturers today think it's a good idea to send cars out with spare, without spare wheels, because if you do get a puncture, you've got to call down, break down people, and that just costs you money and gives you hassle. There's some repair kit in there, but who knows how to use those? I don't think anybody really knows how to use those, do they? And they never really work properly if you, uh, if you really have damage to time. So, um, yeah, so. So everyone wants to know how long the battery will last. Well, mine's a 24 kilowatt version, uh, and this end claim it would do 120 miles. I reckon if you ever meet anybody who says they can get more than 100 miles out of uh, the range of one of these, I would suggest you run. You run fast. You don't wait around for him to take his anorak off, because anybody who, who wants to sort of talk about that is going to bore you to death within minutes. I would suggest that... Uh, 70 to 80 miles is very, very achievable if you drive normally. And by driving normally, I don't mean driving fast or anything like that. Um, I think, you know, why, why you want to try and save every tiny ounce of battery and percentage, you know, it's not worth it. These cars are cheap to run. I'm not a tree hugger. I bought it because I wanted, I wanted a cheap motoring. Uh, and it really is cheap motoring. And uh, so I would suggest that uh, drive it normally, don't worry about it. The only reason you would need to uh, worry about uh, driving it slightly slower is if you're, you know, you've got a long way between charges. So most people want to know how much it costs to run. I think since I got this car, I think that my electricity bill has gone up by about £30-ish. I think when I had a diesel car, I used to spend around £150 a month-ish. So, you know, it's a lot cheaper to run uh, and a lot easier. If you want those accurate figures, then I would suggest that you go and find the guy with the anorak who can do 100 miles on a range, because he's probably worked them all out already, and, uh, you know, he can bore you with those figures as well. So, driving around the town, uh, these cars are, are made for it. They're automatic, very easy, they plod along around the town very, very simply. Uh, the only thing about it is you're travelling slower and you're driving in a very ugly car. Okay, so I've had to stop at the traffic lights. Acceleration on these uh, cars are quite impressive. Uh, they have a linear torque curve, so they just pick up from standstill very quickly with as much torque as you'd get at, uh, at higher revs in a, in a, a conventional car. Uh, that means that when it comes to traffic light burnouts, uh, I don't think since I've earned the, owned this car that I've actually lost a traffic light burnout. Uh, of course, it's only to 30 miles an hour, but they just launch off lights very well. 
Okay, so driving through the, uh, the lanes and the twists and turns, the handling isn't too bad at all. It's not great, but it's not too bad. It drives quite well and it handles quite well. You do get a bit of a torque steer uh, when you accelerate hard, but you get that from any front wheel drive car. Um, and uh, you know the traction control seems to kick in a little bit early when you've got your uh, when you've got your heavy boots on, which would probably imply there isn't as much grip as you'd like. Uh, but on the whole, on the whole, it's okay. So driving on motorways is absolutely fine. It'll cruise at 70 miles an hour without any problems. The, the top end acceleration is a little bit slow and a bit sluggish and it won't reach speeds that are really risky driving license. Uh, one thing that really is annoying though is I believe the speed had to be quite wildly inaccurate. I've got my external GPS in here to track the speed and uh, it showed that when the speed I was showing 70 miles an hour, the car was really only doing little more than 60. To actually get up to 70 miles an hour, you have to have your speedo showing at about 78, 79 miles an hour, which is fine, apart from the fact that because the speedo is quite high up, other motor is coming past you or you're overtaking can actually see what speed you're doing. So therefore, if you are overtaking a policeman and your speedo is showing nearly 80 miles an hour, you never know, he might want to ask you a few questions. There's some things I really don't like about this car. Um, the worst thing is the sat nav radio, you know, control screen thing that's touch screen. If I were Nissan, I would consider sacking all my software developers and employ people who actually have some idea about how to use uh, an application in the real world. I've used sat navs on motorcycles, you know, with touch screens with big fat gloves on that work a hundred times better than the one that we have in the Nissan. Uh, the biggest frustration is. With, it has issues with when the car bounces and you're trying to push something on the screen um, you end up pushing the wrong button or pushing the wrong thing and then you end up taking your eyes off the road for far too long to try and correct the mistake that you've made it is hideous design and very very frustrating another thing is the app you can download on your phone i would suggest don't bother um, as they probably use the same guys to develop that app as they, they use to do the onboard sat nav thing. Uh, it is a very annoying app. Every time you want to do anything, you have to wait about 20 minutes for it to do something in the background. Presumably it's trying to download data or, or something odd. Uh, but it is so frustrating to use, it is not worth worth even, even putting on your, on your device. Uh, I would suggest that, I bet Nissan is probably sitting there thinking, well, let's not, spending, let's not bother spending money on this app because nobody's ever using it. Well, they need to wake up. The reason people aren't using it is because it's rubbish. Now, how many of you like to hear fingernails scraping down a blackboard screeching? Well, below 20 miles an hour, this, this Nissan Leaf will do that for you. It sort of does an artificial sound. I, presumably it's to try and warn pedestrians, but it's not required and not needed. And the most frustrating thing about it, I mean, it, uh, is that you can turn it off, but it doesn't remember that you've turned it off. So you have to do it every time you get in the car. It is just so annoying. I have suffering tinnitus and I have to put up with this noise all the time until I push the button. No, I just want a toggle button to turn it off and leave it off or turn it on for some weird reason that you might want it on. It's very annoying. So the question is, is would I buy another Nissan Leaf? I'd certainly buy another electric car, but whether it be a Leaf or not, I would consider a Leaf. But I do think that Nissan have fallen far short of producing the car that they really should have, uh, they should have produced. It has so many little niggly things uh, about it, but on the whole, it's a good solid car.